Okay, Mary the Ambitious Gardener here. It's Sunday, March 23rd. Uh, the 22nd was supposedly our last frost date. Um, but apparently this week, uh, one night, the low's going to be down in the low 30s. I'm a little worried about that, but... Uh, uh, I couldn't wait. I had to, uh, I had to start planning. So I did. Uh, my potato patch over here that I threw those potato seedlings in are starting to sprout. Uh, I can't believe it, but it's happening. There are potato sprouts coming up like crazy in here. Uh, wow. Um... These are the baking potatoes that I put in here. Yeah, they're, they're coming up everywhere. You can see down there, a little bit of green, a little bit of green. Um, ah, I'm so excited about that. It's going to be great. Um, here I've got my uh, pots with the Roma tomatoes that I grew from seed, along with some marigolds, companion planting, of course. If you're not familiar with companion planting, you should try it because it's very beneficial um, to the plants. Uh, attracts good insects, keeps diseases away, um, helps the flavor of the vegetable. The list goes on and on. Um, these are potatoes. These are the, uh, the red potatoes. Added some more dirt to them yesterday. And uh, they're actually starting to almost reach the top of the pot. I can't wait for that. Um, put my beans in there. Yesterday I've got Kentucky Wonder and the Romano Italian green beans, which are uh, Mac and, and mine's favorite. I planted, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten squares with nine plants each. That's going to be a lot of beans, folks. Um, I put up these, the little uh, pole teepees there, um, hoping that the pole beans will climb, climb up. And I added um, a mesh uh, arbor, I guess you would call that, um, to the back over the wood. Um, trellis because I, I think the beans can go a lot higher than what they did last year and I don't think that they like the wood. They don't like grabbing onto wood. Um, I heard that yesterday. Uh, again, companion planting. There's a nasturtium in there uh, that I grew from seed and then those over there, those four plants, are sunflowers I also grew from seed. Uh, very good for beans. Um, found out also that marigolds, don't plant marigolds near your beans. They don't like each other very much. Okay? Um, these four sad little seedlings that you see in this row here are my, uh, Ichabon eggplant, the long skinny eggplants. <laughs> seedlings I grew, they just never got any bigger than that. I don't know why. But, um, I threw them in here anyway, see what they do. If they don't make it, hell, I will just go buy some plants at the store and throw them in there. Um, carrots, radishes. I think, uh, I think those radishes are ready to be harvested. We'll have to have some of those with our salad tonight. I'll have to check these carrots, too, because I'm pretty sure I might have a couple of those that are ready to go. Um, more potatoes I threw in, in this square. I just added more dirt to that because they're really starting to sprout. Um, let's see. Over here. Oh, here's more potatoes. More potatoes. That one's getting pretty big. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of potatoes, I hope. Uh, romaine lettuce is really looking good. I'm letting it get nice and big. Uh, and then we'll just harvest the whole thing. Um, so coming along nicely. These are these are green onions. And <laughs> I need to pull them out. They've been in there since last year. Uh, scattered some little onions around here, around the carrots. Because, of course, they're good companion plants together. 
I um, threw some flowers in here yesterday, some petunias, and some impatience, and um, that's a lone broccoli. It's actually starting to to grow some, get some good growth going there. I grew that from seed also. There's some more carrots. An example of how not to grow carrots is this right here. <laughs> I never thinned them out, and um, they are way too close together. Um, and when you go to harvest them, they're just deformed, and but still tasty. I mean, still good to eat. I had to uh, add some chicken wire to the back there. Uh, something was getting behind the garden here and ate my sugar snap peas. This plant right here was actually starting to climb up the trellis and when I came out uh, half of it was gone. So I did a little investigating over here and saw where the little booger was getting in and I just added some more chicken wire and um, hopefully that'll keep whatever's getting in there out. Um, so yeah, here's the green bean patch. Um, this is some more garlic that actually doesn't really look like it's doing that well. Uh, it's kale. That's kale. This is spinach, slow growing, but finally starting to actually look like spinach. I've never had luck with it, but it looks pretty good. Here's more kale. Kind of excited about that try uh, to put it in some soup or some with some pasta or who knows figure it out um, shallots never grown shallots before so um, that ought to be interesting and uh, you know, let's go over here and we'll see my my new beds and uh, oh wait forgot my little tomato it's another tomato that's aroma with a zinnia that I grew from seed Leaves are not looking as green as I would like them to look, but uh, they'll acclimate. That's actually in some mushroom compost with the vermiculite and the peat moss. Um, this is my first time using them. I've actually found the mushroom compost at Lowe's, and um, we'll see how well the plants do with that. It's supposed to be one of the best composts to use. Um, mix some dirt. <laughs> Mixed some more dirt yesterday. Still have, uh, probably have enough to make a whole nother, whole nother batch. And it's always good to have extra um, soil laying around. So that when you're transplanting or if you harvest and you pull a plant up, you always have fresh soil to um, replenish uh, the square in the garden. Um, these are what I have left over from yesterday. I'm going to plant those here in a few minutes. The greenhouse really doesn't have a whole lot left in it. Um, those are some jalapenos, nasturtium, uh, cucumber, uh, some more Roma tomatoes. That's Slavia. I'm growing from seed. Petunias have not come up yet. I'm trying petunias from seed, but they might take a while. Um, Beefsteak, tomatoes, and brandy wine not doing well at all uh, that's a zinnia and that's a slavia that actually came up uh, my mint is actually coming back I added some soil to the top of that give it some nutrients and um, it's looking pretty good can't kill it this is the only tomato plant I had to buy this year and it's a big beef and um, Companion planting with a marigold. See that? Here's my new 4x4 that I put in uh, specifically for squash and zucchini. Uh, square foot garden method. Since these plants get so large, um, you really, I really should probably only have two plants in here. Um, but I have two zucchini. There's the zucchini. There's a zucchini, and that's a um, straight neck squash. And I actually put some rabbit deterrent plants in here. The rabbits don't like lavender, and they don't like Dusty Miller, and I don't think they'll eat the basil. 
but aromic herbs are great companion plants for the squash and zucchini, as well as sunflowers. It's a sunflower. Another nasturtium down there. Um, so yeah, last year I had the squash and zucchini in the main garden, and um, I had them caged, and I just don't think that they did that well. So um, I'm not caging these, so I'm letting these just go, and if it ends up, if they get too big, I can just take, um, I can just tr retransplant the other stuff uh, somewhere else. That's the beauty of a square foot garden. Um, over here, uh, I added another trellis because I put my cucumbers in here. I've got six cucumber plants, two per square, uh, two per square foot, and, um, sunflowers. Those are all sunflowers there in the front. Great companion plants. I grew those from seed. Um, they were damaged by the frost, but I managed to save them. Um, and they're thriving, so that's good. Um, in here I bought uh, four cow horn peppers uh, because you know cow horns, they're my favorite. They're my favorite pepper. Um, just love them, and I had such great luck with them last year. Um, hopefully four plants will be enough. <laughs> Um, that's a zinnia, really pretty zinnia. It looks almost like a daisy, uh, but it's a zinnia companion plant and a marigold. And petunias and peppers, of course, are great companion plants. They love each other. Um, in my new box over here, I got these two new boxes I put in this year. Um, I put two jalapenos that I grew from seed. There's a jalapeno. There's a jalapeno. And, of course, petunias and a marigold. And then the same uh, over here. Uh, hopefully, they'll do okay with the cold weather we have coming. I'm probably going to have to cover a lot of stuff up this week. Um, anyway, there's our mulch. And i uh, going to get, get busy whipping the yard into shape. As you can see, it kind of needs some attention. It's a lot of weeds. Um, the azaleas... They look kind of sparse, spiny, but uh, they're blooming right now. Um, so yeah, that's it, folks. Uh, a lot of work in the yard yesterday, but it was fun. I loved it. It was beautiful. And now um, the fun begins, watching everything grow. Well, have a good weekend. Thanks for watching.